Hi guys, it's week four um, in our money management or personal finance um, series of lessons. We are going to look today at how do I keep my money safe? So quick starter like we've done over the last couple of weeks. You just need to have a little bit of a review of what you did last week, which is looking at budgeting. So you've got three questions to answer. They'll probably take you about five minutes to do. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll go through the answers. OK, so we've got number one, what is a budget? Number two, two things you need to consider or you need to think about before you set yourself a budget. And number three, why is it important to keep track of spending and saving? OK, so hopefully it's given you a little bit of a memory jog for last week. These are the answers to the question. So number one, you can clearly see budget is defined. This is from your fact sheet, actually. So you would have seen this before. So a budget is defined as a plan or an estimate of the amount of money needed for the cost of living or use for a specific purpose. So if you give yourself a budget, so just say you're going shopping in Birmingham, you're, I don't know, you're going to Primark or you're going out clothes shopping, you might give yourself a budget of £50 or £100. That is an estimate of what you are roughly going to be spending when you go out shopping. You might be very clear with your uh, budget and say, no, you are not going to go over budget. Others might say, well, that's what I'm kind of estimating that I'm going to spend, although I have got a little bit extra if I need to or want to go over. Uh, question number two, things you need to consider. You need to consider how much money comes in. So how much you get from your salary or if it's kind of you guys or maybe a part time job or birthdays or Christmas money or any kind of money that you get in terms of maybe selling things. Um, outgoings and bills. So what things do you have to pay on a regular basis? Are there any things that might come up every two or three months rather than kind of a regular payment every month. So, you know, what are the outgoings and what are your needs and wants? So what do you actually kind of need and want, which are completely different? You might need things for you to survive, like, I know, heating and water and food, electricity, um, obviously clothing. You need those. Wants are like desires, things that you don't need to basically keep yourself or essential items. It's things that you kind of desire, things that you that you really want to and it makes yourself feel happy or things that you can consume or things, you know, it might be things about wearing things or it might be going to see things or, you know, traveling or entertainment. They are all kind of wants. You don't need them. You don't need them. And they're not essential to survive. You might argue that. But actually, they're not really essential to survive. It's things that actually want the things that you kind of like non-essential items that you um, that you kind of desire. And then time, you know, how, how are you going to do your budget? Is it every week? Is it every month? Are you going to give yourself a daily budget? Some people give themselves a daily budget for spending on traveling to work and lunches and breaks and things like that. So is it a daily, a monthly, a weekly, yearly? You know, what is it? OK, give yourself the marks and then let's move on to this week's lesson. OK, quick reminder. Uh, this is linking back to uh, lesson two, actually, about banking. So, you know, why do we use a bank account? Most of us have got bank accounts and it's really either to save. So it's convenient for me to save. It's convenient for me to pay bills. It's easy for me to get paid from work. It's safe. It's protected. It's insured if anything goes wrong. Um, your cards, obviously, they have a, an insurance with them as well. So if somebody steals your card or you know, has some kind of fraudulent activity on it, you are insured with the bank. OK, so there is, there is a safety net there. And also, obviously, savings again, making sure that you are allocating little pots of money for uh, maybe specific things or maybe just th things for the future. So that's just a little bit of a reminder from using bank accounts from um, a couple of weeks ago. OK, now this week we're going to be looking at uh, you know, keeping your money safe. So one of the main issues um, that you will come across and you probably come across them already are things called scams. OK, so I would what I'd like you to do is you need to put pause this in a second. I want you to put the um, YouTube clip on. Now, there should be now a document that you get given or you are supplied with that will tell you business studies and it will give you the links that you can go straight on to. So it's a bit easier for you. So you don't type in the wrong address or, um, you know, it doesn't come up or it's saying it's unavailable because sometimes they do. Uh, but these should be absolutely fine. I've checked them. They should be OK. So put this in. Look at it. It's about two minutes, just over two minutes long. Write down any notes that you think you need important things about what scams are and also write some examples as well. So I'll come back to you in you know, three or four minutes. OK, now all of us are open to being scammed. OK, doesn't 
have to be anybody that's old most mostly people think oh it's old people that get scammed not at all we will all of us will see different types of scams every single day so this is where you need to kind of get your pen you either type it on the computer or get your pen and write some notes and hopefully you've written some of this down already from the video scams they are fake offers or companies that are trying to trick people for you to either give them money or give them your personal details so or actually both so it's fake it's not real you know when they get your details they're going to use it for something and also money they want to get money from you they might promise that they're going to give you a product or a service that's not going to happen okay the thing the way in which they are doing it changes all the time because it's become more sophisticated because clearly if you've got it specialists looking for these kind of things they've got to invent new ways all the time to scam people and get people to believe them okay they're normally through emails and text messages online banking uh, on your mobile phone kind of apps and um, can come in the post sometimes and actually some of them look really really clear i had a message one day at school i've been teaching all day i think it was must have been lunch or break and i got um a voice message from uh, a number i didn't recognize and it sounded really official and because i know this i didn't fall for it however i can understand that if you got this phone call you'd be really worried so it said to me oh sorry the cat's just getting off the sofa um it said something to the effect of this is the inland revenue or hmrc and there's a problem with your tax you need to ring us immediately on this number and we need to update your details now it also said if you don't do this within 24 hours you will have a visit from the police now i know that's ridiculous i have a system where you pay it pay a way p-a-y-e which is pay uh, which is the payroll in school they will sort all my tax out all my national insurance so if there was a problem with my tax code or any my any type of tax that i'm paying hr and finance would have come and found me straight away and actually there shouldn't be any problems with it because they're responsible for paying it so obviously i know that but if i was somebody who didn't know that that actually would really scare me and I'd probably think, God, you know what? I need to ring up and give them my details. So they can be very, very difficult to spot. Write these down, please, in your notes. OK, so moving on to a little activity. Now, this link that's up here, it will be on the sheet. But if you put this link in, it won't come up with the teacher login like it's done before. This is just a student one. OK, so I've managed to get found the student one. So it will go straight to this. How can I keep my money safe um, quiz and test and knowledge? OK. It will probably take you about five minutes or so, I think, to do it. Maybe a little bit longer. So go onto the website and do as much as you possibly can. Okay, so hopefully you've got um, five out of five on some of your um, question answers, little test and knowledge quiz. Moving on to, um, what do you think if you are caught up in a scam and you do fall for it? And God, I would never say to people, oh, how silly of you doing that some of them are really really realistic the some of them i think would catch lots of people out what do you think people should do if they think they are a victim of a scam you need to get a pen and paper and you need to write down all the things that you think that they can do okay hopefully you should have at least two or three things if you've not what you need to do is you need to add these to your list or write them down if you didn't get them so number one, victims should not feel embarrassed, okay? Anybody can get caught with a scam. So anybody can get caught, so please don't feel embarrassed about it. Victims do need to report um, spam text directly to um, 7726. So it's free of charge and they will then help and support you and they will find out details of what your scam is and um, they will try and obviously sort the issue out. Action Fraud is another one, which is a national um, centre for crime, uh, cyber crime and fraud. Um, you could report it to them if you've been scammed or you're a victim of cyber crime, i.e. on the internet. So if you go to their web page or type in Google cyber crime or action fraud, it will come up with it straight away. Citizens Advice is really good and they will give you help and advice for problems and they will it's free and they will obviously they're not going to tell anybody it's completely confidential but they'll also point you in the right direction of where you need to get help okay and your banks as well 
So banks will help and support you if you've been a victim of um, scams, but they are very, very good about letting you know if there's any activity on your account that doesn't ring true to you. So my bank, for instance, um, I've had phone calls before and said, did you realise that, um, or there's been an activity on your account which is um, a bit out of character? So maybe I'd spent a big lump, a big sum of money in one particular shop where normally it will be small amounts. Um, they will um, send uh, text messages and emails if my account has been logged on anywhere or from a different device. So if I've logged on from my laptop school laptop it will come up with their where it's been logged on and um, kind of like Milton Mowbray and you know where and what, what kind of device it was so they're normally very very good at letting you know if any activity is a little bit strange for you um, so they'll report it and they block things as well I, did, I got something blocked actually I can't think what it was I got something blocked because they thought it wasn't me using it so I had to ring up and get it sorted out um, but they are normally very very good and they will never contact you uh, to ask you to give them your details because clearly they know your details so if it's your bank or they say it's your bank I would not answer any questions I would then ring the bank back and speak to them that's the way I would do it if you've not got these then please write them down now okay so now we've got all those um, areas or piece of advice that we could give victims um, there are three keywords that I need you to write down we've got what fraud is cybercrime and spam now fraud obviously is a dis dishonest way to commit a crime it's taken something of value generally it's money um, from people but it can be identity as well cybercrime is where you've got criminal activity which is using the internet computers phones tablets apps you know phone apps things like that and spam is text or emails that um, you get from people that you've not asked for them. So it's normally um, where they're trying to kind of um, spread computer viruses. So you have to be very, very careful on opening emails from people that you do not know. So write these three down. OK, so in this activity, you've got three different scenarios. So there's one on this um, slide and there's two on the next one. OK you need to look at the little scenarios you need to read it and you need to give that person advice based on the information that we've just looked at so you know what could they do so what i would suggest you do is you pause this now do question number one and then you flip on to the next one which is question two and question three once you've done those we will move on so pause these now OK, so I want you to watch a couple of little videos. Now, when you go on to this website link, it will take you to a page. that has got lots and lots and lots of different videos. You can watch as many as you like. But the specific ones that I want you to look at are the Nana Scammers. That's what it's called. And um, the phishing. OK, so phishing, phishing depends how you like to say it. But there are lots and lots of different videos. But if you go to those two for me, I'd like you to read them and listen to them. Write down any information that you think is addition to the stuff you've got from today already. And if you want to spend a little bit of time going on there, get safe online. There's absolutely stacks and stacks of information for you. Loads and loads of different videos. So do that now. And then one of the last activities I want you to do is called Scam Busters. Again, this um, link is a student link, so you don't need to go in through my teacher link. Again, it's just looking at um, how to help Liam and his family decide if they are going to be scammed or are they being scammed with certain scenarios so use the web link and do that particular activity for me it will probably take you about five minutes or so okay guys so getting towards the end we've only got one more activity to do now what i would like you to do is i'd like you, you to share your advice and what would you give to people the advice you'd give to people um who is spending money online you know what do you think you should tell them to do to keep them safe so you can design like a little bit of a, a leaflet or a little bit of a poster and telling people how to keep safe and what could they do to avoid scams. Now, this activity could take you five minutes. It could take you half an hour. It depends how much detail you want to put in it. OK, so that is your last activity. What I'd like you to do now is once you've finished all those, you need to be thinking about looking at um, weeks one, two and three and four check in that you know all the information make sure you've got a good idea because i will be asking you some more questions next week which will be week five and our final lesson on financial planning 
hope you have a, a, a great weekend um, and hopefully the weather's going to get a little bit better. So see you soon. Bye bye.